think you have a prepaid call from an inmate at the state in California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using... What up, bro? How you doing? What's, go what's going on? Pretty good. How about you, man? Oh, I'm doing good, man. All right, my name's Andrew Segoviano. I've been down since 2013. Um, basically, it's just find somebody to talk to because um, I've been down so long and so much time since I've been a, a minor that I kind of forgot what it's like to be free. I'm kind of losing that that hope and the will that like to fight for myself to get out. So I just basically want to find somebody that's cool. Cause I'm a cool person. I'm not angry. I'm real chill. I like to laugh and have a good time. And uh, um, I just want somebody to talk to, you know. I got JPay so I can get emails and uh, I'm willing to write letters. So that's basically it. What's your nationality? Uh, Hispanic. Were you ever part of any gangs? Groups or organizations, or an associate. Yeah, I used to. Uh, I used to be from Southside Bakers, from Bakersfield. And uh, w w what made you join that gang? Man, um, man, I wasn't finding no love at home, you know. With my, with my, uh, I never had my father. He's never really been there, so it was just my mom and. Uh, She's an alcoholic. She used to do drugs, so man, I was just never home. So I went out and found the love, and you know that I needed it in the streets. So I turned to gangs for that reason, you know. What What are you, are you incarcerated for, and how long is your sentence? Um, right now I'm in Santa Fe Corcoran. Um, I got a. I'm doing 40 years. Well, 85 percent for voluntary manslaughter. Wow, 40 years—that's a long time, bro, for manslaughter. Yeah. It looked like they you got right, railroaded no, and stuff, man. You want to talk about that a little bit? Um, well, pretty much. Uh, man, I killed somebody. Uh, that put his hands on my mom, you know. So they try to. They, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. I'm out of I'm out of Kern County, so um, I've been locked up so much times prior to before uh, uh, I committed this crime. But uh, basically, the, the cops just threw on the whole little gang stuff and stuff like that. But um, this dude put his hands on my mom, and uh, I shot him about I think four times, once in the stomach, twice in the back, and then once in the back of the head. So um, I was only 17 at the time, but. They, uh, I ended up taking a deal so that my co-defendants could go home. And uh, I took 40 years or 85%, and my co-defendant got nine years or 80, but they ended up giving him half time, and he, ended up, he only did like two years in prison. But I did that because he didn't have nothing to do with my crime, so I wanted to, you know, I, I, I took the rap for what I did, you know, and uh, I know what I did was it wasn't exactly right, but... I'm content with my time, considering what I did for who, you know? When you first got sentenced, how you feel about it? And when you um, first went to prison and hit the main line, what was your mentality? Actually, uh, uh, I've never been main line in prison. I was, uh... You got more time? Sorry about that. Uh, um, I never been. I was GP in the county jail, so um, it was pretty much right around the time that, because when I first got arrested, about two months into fighting my case, I ended up uh, getting hit with a uh, with a attempted murder case. So I was fighting two cases when I first got arrested, and I was GP in the county jail, and uh, I ended up beating the beating the. Um, the, the attempted murder case, and I'm still fighting the murder when I just seen the politics around the gangs in the in my county jail. You know, I seen how all they would do was just use us youngsters. You know, 
And uh, I'm not one of the smartest people out there, but I ain't stupid, you know? And uh, when I decided to actually start thinking about taking a deal, and they they uh, they were flirting with the 40, you know? When I finally got a chance to have a conversation with the DA, um, man, I just was like, man, if I'm gonna spend the rest of my life in prison or just 40 years, then, then I'm gonna do it my way. I ain't gonna do it being told what to do, you know what I mean? Uh, so I just, when I took my deal, I ended up locking it up in, in, a, uh, in the county jail, so. Okay, what what do you have to say to the youngsters out here, bro, that's uh, um, involved in gang activity or thinking about joining gangs? Man, all I can say, man, is gang banging ain't the same as it, as it, as it used to be. It used to be, you know, everybody looking out for each other. You know, you look out for your homies, uh, your loved ones. You know, you, you grow up with somebody, and you, you rep the block, you hustle. And then it's not like that no more, man. It's, it's all these older people using the youngsters to go do dirty work, man. All I can say is it's hard, you know, when you're young and you're in the streets. Everybody's situation is different. But when you get a chance... Look at the situation, man. Don't let anybody else ever use you. If they're using you and that's all they're doing, man, it's best to see that for what it is and just get out of it, man. It's not it's not worth it. Because you're going to get stuck all up in this stuff in prison, and it's not fun. It's, it's, it's trash in here. Um, man, pretty much being home, you know, my mom, she used to drink all the time and stuff. When she would drink, she would get hella loud. She'd always, uh, uh, I wouldn't say she beat me, but she, she, she hit me. So I'd rather be in the streets, you know, because if I went home, then I'd have to deal with, with my mom's like, like acting like that, you know? So once I hit a certain age to where I understood, like when you're going to school and people start blowing you for having messed up clothes, that's when I, like, my mindset changed to where, all right, what do I got to do to to not be bullied, you know, so what do I got to do to make money so I can buy clothes and shoes and stuff like that, and that's pretty much how I started gangbanging, like, I, I, I started seeing that there were drug dealers on the block, so I got into doing that stuff when I was real young, I was like nine, ten years old, so I did that to eat. I did that to put clothes on myself. I basically did it to be cool, you know? Because that's how I started gangbanging, you know? Yeah, well, uh, I got locked up when I was 17, so I never really had a chance to, to actually be an adult, you know, and, and like, be, be responsible for, for myself. Um, I've always felt the need to take care of my family, which is my mom, and my and my three brothers, and uh, um, so pretty much I, I've always just been in the streets, grinding and hustling, just trying to take care of my family, man. Even though everything that that I've been through, my mom's put me through, my my pops put me through, um, to this day, and uh, family to me is everything. Without without your your family, you know what are you? Who are you? You know. Um, so that's pretty much what I've always had to do with. So when I first got arrested, it was real hard to, to look past that, to look past the mentality that I, I grew up living. And, uh, but now, this prison, it's, it's taught me how to live um, for myself. It's taught me how to just take care of myself and it's taught me how to be an adult. Um, I had a lot of time to, to reflect on how I was raised, what I've been through, and I used to be a real angry person when I got locked up. Um, the first year and some change, I was fighting a lot, uh, walking around with, with knives and stuff like that. And uh, anytime anybody looked at me wrong, my first instinct was to fight, and that's what I did. But nowadays, it's uh. It sucks living that life, being angry, being... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. It, yeah, it's, it's, not a, it's not a cool life to live, man, so I, I had to...
I got the, the mindset to actually look at things and not want to, I chose not to want to live like that no more. It wasn't easy. It didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen in a month. It didn't happen in a year, the change, but it, it has happened. Uh, I'm a lot calmer, and I ain't been in a fight in a couple years, so it's pretty much, uh, it's cool not being angry all the time. You just got, as, a, as an individual, everybody's different. You have to find who you are and how you want to live in life. Until you do that, it's kind of hard to change. You just, you just got to want it, man. That's, I just hope that there's someone out there that, that hears this interview and that can see that and uh, can understand what I'm trying to get through. You know, I ain't one of the smartest people. I'm not really good with words, all that great. But I hope that um, somebody out there will, will be able to understand and comprehend what I'm trying to say in, in, in my limited capacity, you know? You have 60 seconds remaining. Give a shout out to your people real fast, to your friends. I, I, I send my love to my mom's man, my, my little brother's Matthew, my mom Cheryl, man, my little brother uh, David. I love you guys, man. I miss you. I'll be home soon.